Loki. E Dominic to go good day. It is closing in on one o'clock in the PM of Moon Day, the 29th of May, 2023. In the lunar cycle Apisciskit Satos, the flower moon, which is our first of five summer lunar cycles. I'm really just getting my work day started. I had no animals to pick up in the morning. The trapping business is just slow, uh, much, much slower than any late May previous to this. And I think that's owing to whatever has happened to the skunks. But in any case, um, I, I filled my morning with some lawn work, which is much overdue, and I've got lots more still that needs to be attended. I uh, kind of well, hope I'll knock some of that out this week in the, in the mornings. Now this afternoon, I am starting out with a dog walk on the west side, followed by, we're going to check out a um, an injured goose at a pond on the west side. It might have something wrapped around its leg, and if so, we're going to capture the goose and cut whatever's on its leg off of there. Then we're going to go over to the south side, climb up on the roof, and see about the baby raccoon that's been down in the bottom there um, of that old chimney going into the kitchen kind of thing and then what after that um, got to head back over here to the to the north side stop at Canadian Tire buy some spray foam then visit a residence remember where I caught that garter snake the other day um, there's a there's another one back there underneath going in that hole in the, that crack they got in the sidewalk a little bit of sunken a um, little bit of sunken gravel under their concrete pad I think and so I'm gonna take some spray foam over there and close that up for them so that um, they don't keep having that issue and then one more dog walk and who knows maybe some rattlesnake relocations in between so let's get it on Oh. Riker's doing increasingly well in his leash training. Um, just walking around this pond here in Copperwood, and this is a uh, this is a nice place. They got frogs going on here. They got yellow-headed blackbirds nesting. They got coots nesting. Um, the latter two birds and their nested ability here, I think, is owing to the standing cottontails above the water that they have here, which is key. That's why they're not in Spopikami anymore, because all we got pretty much there now, there's some cotton, cotton, or cotton tails? Cattails. There's some cattails at, uh, Spopikami, but mostly bulrushes now. And these guys like the cattails over the water and the coots like to build their nest out of cattail fronds. So you can just hear the frogs. It's nice. It's nice, eh, Riker? This is our our midpoint of the walk. And it's a highlight. For me anyway. I think for him too. <laughs> Just out here at Nicholas Sharon Park, looking for the injured goose. Supposedly got something wrapped around its leg. I'm not going to take this goose home or anything, but if it's just got something bound on its leg, I've got wire clippers I can cut it off with. If it's a fishing line, I got little sewing scissors I can clip it off with. I'll just hold her down and, and get her done. But we'll see. This is the second time actually that I've come out here searching. Someone alerted me. I came out, took a look. Couldn't find her. Then her husband messaged me. Same uh, same uh, person. Her husband messaged me and sent me photos of uh, the goose sitting there. He says she's, she's hissing at people and she doesn't go very far. She does move around a bit, but um, but she can't get anywhere. She can't get away. Her leg is really swollen. 
So she probably needs much more treatment than just having the the uh, whatever it is removed. But that's what I'm willing to do today. Um, I already got a patient at the house. <laughs> and I don't need a goose. Well, not that I have anything against the geese. But um, I don't got enough time, I don't think, in the day to attend to too many animals well. Right now, I've got a ground squirrel. Came to us the other night. Uh, we were visiting at Britt's parents' place out on the north end of the reserve, just having uh, dinner and such. And outside on the front step, uh, some, some of us were out, not me, but some were out having a smoke cigarette and this little ground squirrel what we mostly refer to as gophers here approached and um, excuse me and it looked very sad like it looked like it needed help or something you know the ground squirrels normally they don't come by the people so they were like Ryan come look at this ground squirrel and I went to look at him and uh, I was hesitant. They're like, pick him up, you know, and because they know, like, I'm the animal guy, and I can look at him and check him out. And uh, I was I was hesitant because I don't know if you ever been bit by a squirrel, but it's not fun. <laughs> One time when I was a kid, uh, I chased a gray squirrel up a tree and out onto this branch, and I thought I had him co cornered at the end of the branch. But really, once I got out there with him. The reality was he had me cornered. He let out this like squirrel war cry, ah! and then like came after me and bit the heck out of my finger. And uh, <laughs> I could have probably got some stitches actually from that one. I just I just wrapped it up myself. But I wasn't ready to get bitten by another squirrel. This was a young guy that showed up at Britt's parents. So I approached him a little cautiously, but then yeah, I did pick him up and uh, looked him over. Seemed to have a, a wound. There was blood streaked in his hair on one side of his neck. It might be swollen, it looked like. And, um, and not on the other. So we took him home, decided to take him home. I was just gonna bring him back out to the, to the ground squirrel colony there, but one of Britt's sisters, like, giving him, give him a chance to live. So I took him home. And uh, I have him living in a large um, terrarium tank. And he's doing good. He's eating lots. He's getting, um, he especially likes strawberries and pieces of melon and stuff. And uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna build a little corral for him in the backyard so I can get him outside and, you know, just observe him and make sure he's healthy make sure he can uh, do all the things he needs to do to be reintroduced back into the colony. Hopefully he doesn't have actually a projectile or anything in his neck. I'm hoping it was a it was a fight. You know, the males fight pretty hard in uh, ground squirrel culture. They pr fight pretty hard for access to females and this was a small guy so I'm hoping he just got beat up. Need a little time out. A little uh, out to the out to the uh, veterans hospital on the beach for a little bit, have some good times, eat some good food, and go back to work. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, and another thing. Just as I was coming here, I got a call telling me that there's a beaver um, set up in one of the city storm ponds. I'm sure this is a beaver that was showing up on the, that side of town. It's a far si south side of town by the airport. And uh, one of my clients had called me a few weeks, maybe two weeks ago, maybe just before I went to Oregon, and uh, said there was a beaver in her little pond that she has on her property. I went to check it out, and there had been a beaver there, but it wasn't currently, currently occupying it. But it had surely come up from the beaver family that lives in the coulee below, and then... Uh, it had come up from them. No doubt a young bachelor beaver trying to strike it out on his own. And I knew he'd be hitting up a storm pond, probably since he'd entered the neighborhood there. So it doesn't surprise me at all. City wants me to trap him and move him out of there.
out, so we're gonna do that. Some geese up here, I thought I'd take a look on this island. These guys seem to be moving all right. There's a couple over there seem to be moving all right. I'm not sure where this injured one is. I just turned off the camera, looked in this other direction, and I see a lone goose sitting down. I'm betting this is the injured goose. Hey, she would have already stood up and went somewhere else if she wasn't. So, I'm gonna get ready, get set up here and go catch her. And see if we can uh, sort out her issues. <laughs> All right. So she's not so she's not got such a problem that she can't get up and fly away. And that presents, uh, of course, an issue for me. She's right here, and I can't reach her. So I'll probably come back here tomorrow or next time I'm on the west side give another try when she's on shore and approach her faster just dive bomb her and uh, get her injury taken care of at least I kind of know where she's at now hello, hello. yeah absolutely Hello. So, Hi, I'm Judy. Uh, we have ran about you, but I haven't had any rattlesnakes before, but this one looks like that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you for calling. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my stuff and go on the deck behind the canoe and go get my stuff. Okay, as long as I can he move... He looks like he has a rattler. He might be young, but he's quite long. Oh, he could be a bull snake. Could be a bull snake. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I'll head over there anyway. Are you coming over here now? Yep. Okay, Ryan. Looking forward to taking it back. Sorry about it. Thank you. All right, we got a snake call. I'm assuming it's going to be in the backyard. Oh, here he is. Hello, hello. He's right here. If you hurry, he's on the move. Sorry, yeah. I screamed. Okay. But oh, no, then I screamed too. right above us. He went right. No worries. I'm so glad you're doing this. Yeah, yeah thank we're about to right see. Right there. Oh, yeah, that's a bull snake. Oh, is it? Yep. A what? A bull. That's, that's a bull why snake. It have a rattler. Oh. A rattle. Oh. So tell me how you know that's a bull. Oh, I can, I can see it right away. It's, it's a totally different uh, color pattern than the rattlesnakes. Oh, and it's, and its body, its whole body shape and it's, oh, really? the way it moves around and stuff is different. Come here. Oh, look at you. Oh, can I take a picture of you for my grandson? I've got a rattlesnake. If you want to see a rattlesnake, 
Yeah. I've got Maybe. one here. Oh, I hear it. Thank you. Now let's see the rattlesnake. Yeah. And we thought it was, but we weren't just weren't sure. See, there's your difference. Oh, well, they look similar. Oh no, the head. Look at the head. Yeah, they're quite different, really. Oh, okay. Where did you get this one? That one I got oh. on the uh, far south side by the airport. So somebody, it was bugging somebody's farm? It was, Yeah, it was at their house in Sandstone Lane oh, or something. Oh, that's a nice area, yeah. Yeah. They didn't want that thing coming out of the coolie. Yes, yeah, this one's a much darker color. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Did you get a picture? See if I can yeah. get him in here without yeah. getting him bit. Well, they, they won't kill each other? No. No? No. They're sort of cousins. Ooh. Oh, thank you. Oh, you came so fast and we were in such a panic. <laughs> So I'm gonna take this guy out here to the coolie rim where I know there's there's a rattlesnake and bull snake hibernacula. Let it go. Can't believe I had overlooked that I have a snake in the back from last night. I caught a snake out at sandstone and uh, I just show you that footage real quick and then we'll return to releasing the bull snake. But we're gonna have to go release the this rattlesnake in cottonwood too. I had just gone in the evening to go pick it up and then I thought uh, rather than waste the gas and come to the west side I would do it when I was coming out here to to uh, to walk the dog and and uh, take care of that goose and then I completely forgot about it so it's a good thing we got that snake call <laughs> any case this is a really nice area out here and the snakes like it so I'm gonna let him go out this way. Yeah, this must be my snake, eh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I see him. I see him there. Yeah. He's a little bit upset, but not too bad. Kind of a sleepy guy. Yeah. yeah. He's just ready to go, aren't ya? Shall we? Twice now in my rattlesnake handling career here that I have uh, had snakes in my bucket and forgot that they were in there. I needed to let them go. I mean, I, of course, I'm gonna find out next time I open the bucket. But generally, you don't want it to be a surprise.
that residents with the garter snake issue fill that crack with foam. Take Sid for a walk. We'll, I think we'll save the raccoon for last. All right, this is the resident with the garter snake issue. Keeps having garter snakes under her concrete pad here. I caught one the other day. It was basking on the grass right here. But, uh, let's fill this up. This is, hopefully there's no snake in there right now. But yeah, let's fill this up. Let's fill this crack. Maybe a bit in this crack. Great stuff, gaps and cracks. Hey, gonna fill it up. No snake that I can see. Um, I noticed my neighbor just did this yesterday, so I don't know if he noticed that they were going in his area too. Yeah. How many usually will go in there? Uh, if they're having babies like that, if, if that's what was going on, then there could be, you know, a handful of them there using it, but... Sometimes there'll only be one, and it might not be that situation either. It could have been a male snake too, and he's just using this as his summer haunt. I'm not sure what's going on, why you're, why you're getting snakes, but. It was last year that there was a snake skin just left on in front of my thing. And I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> and then my neighbor had said one day, he mowed the lawn and he, he mowed over a couple. And that didn't make sense because normally, if I just went like that, they took off. So I didn't get how they went here in the lawnmower, unless they were dead. Right. Ah. That was the first time I ever saw snakes, and I get that I live by the police, and it's very possible to get them. Yep. But I just don't like them at my house. <laughs> <laughs> of course. A lot of people don't. Well, this will also help you with skunk, because this is getting open enough. Enough has sunk here from the water going in. Okay. That the, the skunks might start using it, too. I should look at, yeah, I don't know, I should probably get that prepared, I just think from the... Come on, Sid. Me and Sid out for her walk. She had great energy coming out the door today because um, I think she missed me. I didn't do her Saturday walk. I was uh, busy with some other things. Just, oh, are we gonna do the, the roll around here? We haven't rolled around enough already. Oh. Get some more rolling in. <laughs> Sid loves to roll. Yeah, she missed me. She missed our walk on Saturday. I apologize to her. I'm gonna make it up for, to her this week, give her an extra walk in there somewhere. Might just do it tomorrow. Put her, uh, I, I normally do Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, but uh, I might do her this week. I might do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Give her four days this week, make up for it. But she's having a good walk this afternoon. Hey, Sidley. Drop Sid off and now am diverted down to the Old Man River really quick because I figure I might as well set that beaver trap.
tonight and uh, or before I go home and so we're headed down here to pick some beaver bait in the form of willows or saplings whatever I can find here on the shoreline of the old man <clears throat> yeah it's uh I'm feeling a little bit tired you know what I really like about my job is that there's no hours like I'm not punching a clock ever I work when I want to work and that's how it is um, what I don't like about my job is there's no clock <laughs> And when I say I work when I want to work, what that means is I work, I work when the animals want me to work, really. That's the reality. Um, I don't have uh, really the say in that, right? It, um, it comes when it comes. And so today is going to be one of those a little bit longer days, you know. But then I started off late too. What did I start off at? Almost 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So... What do I expect? Yeah, I think I'll steal a couple of branches from some of these saplings. There's not a lot of sandbar willow around, or I'll take some of that too. Um, but yeah, beaver bait. And then we'll head to the raccoon house, look down the chimney, see what's going on there, and then go look at the uh, beaver situation in that far south new subdivision. Time to check on the raccoon kit. Here's the chimney. Hello. Anybody down there? It looks clear. I see no kits. Nope. 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 It's clear. This is such an easy thing. An easy fix to make sure that you don't get raccoons. So it's just going to be four screws going in yeah, to me the most difficult part of this whole installation of these chimney caps is just ensuring that there's a, a good balance point that it's not cantered off to one side that each of the bolts goes in kind of equidistant and keeps it centered on here appropriately but yeah just get those into the clay a little bit there and uh, that's a done deal there will never be a raccoon in this chimney again Prairie Arbor another one of Lethbridge's new subdivisions situated just above Six Mile Cooley from which a beaver has climbed up the Cooley Rim no doubt a young male bachelor two-year-old beaver being ousted from his parents lodge being told to go make his own way in the world and he's made his way here to this beautiful neighborhood storm pond look at this look at this redhead duck hey mama hey mama that's right beautiful there look at that she's got this nice flotilla nest right on the water now she needed cattails to do that like i was talking about earlier without cattails at Spopikami, we don't have redheads nesting there anymore we don't have coots nesting there anymore we don't got red-winged blackbirds, or yeah, we do got red-winged blackbirds, these guys. But we don't got the yellow heads, that one that just sang from the other side there. Anyway, 
I gotta check this place out, see if I can figure out where the beaver has been active and we'll set up a trap overnight. Well, not too hard to read the land here and where the beaver has been active. Look at this. Appears to have cut down two trees that no doubt urban agriculture came in afterward and cut the rest of the way down. It would have been, you know, sticking up like this. So, I'm gonna set a trap right here on the bank with this buffalo grass here. And we'll see if we can catch us a beaver tonight. Okay, here's the setup. It's basically a big clamshell style trap. Um, the beaver should step on that pad right there to close the trap. And it'll, uh, what's attracting him of course are these fresh boughs that I cut, but not only the fresh boughs, but see that greasy black stuff on it? That is beaver musk male beaver musk. So this guy's gonna feel that there's competition moving in. He's gonna come check it out even if he's hungry for it or not. Step on that pad. Whack. Get caught in my trap. And then we'll have to move him. So tomorrow morning, I better be here bright and early with a wheelbarrow because it's a little walk to my truck and I'm not gonna be able to carry this awkward big ass trap plus a, a beaver inside of it. All that way very easy. All right, we'll see what happens.